طيب إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So this is the final lecture of um, of this blessed conference بإذن الله تعالى And to be honest um, there are so many مشايخ in this room in this hall at the moment and it's a crime against knowledge and a crime against the inheritance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a Jarima Kubra that I be sitting here and I be talking whilst they're sitting and um, whilst they're in the same gathering as us. Lakin, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us and there's a statement, Mukrahun Akhaka La Batal if you're forced to do something and the responsibility comes on you then you can only seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Um, the lecture is on Awsaf al-Jannah Attributes of Jannah and how to reach this Jannah. Uh, the benefit of a reminder Allah Jalla wa'ala says وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and remind Allah Jalla wa ala says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a kir, remind them. For verily those who benefit and take heed of the remembrance are those who it, are those that benefit from it are the people of remembrance. So, uh, the people of belief and iman. So the mu'minun, whenever they hear the remembrance of Allah Jalla wa ala, and whenever they hear the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they stand at these nusus and at these ayat and verses of the sunnah, uh, uh, a hadith of the sunnah. In a hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, admonishing the companions and he told them to stand where they were. There was a companion who was outside the masjid from a distance and he stopped right there, which shows the virtues of the companions. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them to stand, he was outside and he stood exactly where he was standing. He could have walked in and he could have said, I want to see the message. I want to see the, what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying. Lakin he stood exactly where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. So, which shows that when we hear the remembrance of Allah and the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to be waqafin in the hadal had. We have to stop at that station. And when Allah Jalla wa ala was talking about in Surah Al-Asr, Al-Asr in Insan Lafi Khusr, Ila Akhir Al-Aya, there are, Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned that everyone's in a state of loss, except for people who have possessed four characteristics, Ila Ladin Aman, those who believe, wa Aminu Salihati, wa Tawasaw Bil Haqqi, wa Tawasaw Bil Sabr, except for those who have Iman and do righteous actions. Iman and righteous actions are together, they can never depart. And then those who encourage and remind one another of the truth. This dunya that we're living in, it's a dunya that is of imtihan. It's a trial and tribulation. Everyone goes through different stages. Everyone's born. And then you're a young person. Then you grow up. And so on. Like in throughout all of these marahil, all of these stages, it's a test. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا so Allah Jalla wa ala tells us that he created us and he's the one that created life and death and it is a trial and a test for us to see who does the best or who has the best actions. Who sincerely does it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these ibadat that he's doing and who does it in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's everyone. If we look into the guidance of the Anbiya and they were prophets who Allah Jalla wa ala chose when Allah was describing them in the Quran innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati wa yad'unana raghaban wa rahaba wa kanu lana khashi'in the anbiya the messengers of Allah who Allah spoke to some of them who Allah chose them from the people Allah Jalla wa ala says verily they used to rush towards the good deeds they used to rush towards prayer towards fasting, towards zakah, towards all of the ibadah, towards the masajid of Allah Jalla Sha'nuhum. They were ones that used to rush. But how? In a state of what? Their hal was what? Raghaban. 
they used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahaba. They used to fear Allah Jalla wa'ala whilst hoping in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, from the beginning of the lectures on Friday, we went through different stages. From death to the life of the grave to Yawm al Qiyamah and then to the descriptions of the fire. And now we're looking into some of the descriptions of Jannah bi ta'ala and what Allah Jalla wa'ala has prepared. Lakin if we look at Yawm al Qiyamah itself, it's something to fear, it's something to prepare for. It's something to what? To prepare for. A man came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked him, Mata sa'a? When is the hour? And he said to him, Mada a'adatta laha? Rather than asking me about when the hour is, what have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for the day that every single one of us will stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Allah Jalla Wa Ala in Surah Al-Hajj, in talking about the ahwal, the situation of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he mentioned a beautiful example. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ O oh, you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, the shaking of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is a great thing. طيب, what will happen on that day? يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَ النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ on a day where the nursing mother will throw away her, whatever it is that she's nursing. The one that is carrying, the one that is pregnant will throw away, and the load that she has, the child that she has will fall down. And the people will appear drunken. Like in they're not drunken, like in the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shadeed. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shadeed. After this, the people are of two. Fariqun fil jannah wa fariqun fil sa'ir. The people are too. These things, they're from the i'tiqad, they're from the belief of a Muslim. This is what makes us different from the kuffar. The Muslim is the one that believes in Allah Jalla Sha'nuhu. These are from the pillars of iman in which a person's iman will not be correct unless he believes in these situations, in these pillars and tenets of faith, of iman. So a person cannot say, I've never seen Akhir, I've never come back to it. If you dig the grave up, you won't see anything. Sahih, you may not see anything. Lakin it's the belief that we have. And this belief is derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. If we look into Al-Jannah and what Allah Jalla wa ala prepares for them, the believers. In reality, in the dunya there's a Jannah. In the dunya there's a Jannah. And whomsoever does not enter into the jannah of the dunya, they shall be deprived of the jannah of the hereafter. What is the jannah of the dunya? The jannah of the dunya is al imanu billahi jalla wa ala. That you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the jannah of this dunya. That's why if you look into the non believers, if you look into those people and even the usad that don't obey Allah jalla wa ala, they're living in the wretched life. The one who turns away from the remembrance of Allah Jalla wa ala, the life they live in is a life of disaster. If a person doesn't live in the Jannah of the dunya, there's no hope for him in the Jannah of the hereafter. And the Jannah of the dunya is that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you obey Allah Jalla wa ala and that you're an obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, the na'im of Jannah in reality starts when a person is about to pass away. When a person is about to pass away. The angels will come to the, Muslim, the believer. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Inna ladhina qalu rabbuna Allahu thumma istaqamu tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaikatu alla takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abashiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun nahnu awliyaukum fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي لَنْفُسُ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ نُزُولًا مِنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ When a person is dying and is in his last breath, the angels will come to the believer. Who? إِنَّ الَّذِنَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا 
Amran, two things. Alladina, those that say we believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala, like in not a mere word that you utter, you believe in your tongue and you believe in your heart and your actions prove your belief. And that is the Iman, the belief of the people of the Sunnah, whereby Iman is that you utter the word of Tawheed and then you believe in it in your heart. And then you act according to it. So if a person is doing all sorts of ma'asi and they say Al-Iman, al-iman is here, then know there is something wrong with his Iman. And also Iman, it increases and it decreases. Increases with the members of Allah and it decreases with the obedience of Allah and the obedience of Shaytan. So ala kullin, the angels will come to those that believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala astaqam, and then they are upright. That's the action. They are upright. What will they say to him? Do not fear for that which is about to come. Because when a person is about to die, he knows the haqq. There's nothing to it now. He can see everything that he was told about. He can see everything. Muslim, non-Muslim. And that is the situation, that's the time when a person is most in need of reassurance. So these angels come to him. Allah takhafu. Do not fear for that which is to come. Wala tahzanu. And do not grieve for those that you have left behind. Do not grieve for the things that you have left behind. For verily Allah Jalla wa ala will look after them. So at that very point, that's when the reassurance and the na'im happens for this person. And what will they say to him, these angels? Allah wa abishiru bil jannah. And have glad tidings of Jannah. May Allah Jalla wa ala make us of those that you were promised. The Jannah that you were promised have glad tidings. So if he hasn't entered into the Jannah, like in its reassurance of what is to come, is better than that which has preceded. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْأَخِرِ We were your friends and your protectors in the dunya. And we shall do so and continue being so in the akhirah. And then what? When you enter into Jannah, you shall have everything that you show your soul desires. Everything that you desire. Nuzulam min ghafurur rahim. And an entertainment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the host of Allah jalla wa ala is your host on that day. And Allah jalla wa ala is the most generous of hosts. That is when Jannah starts for the Muslim. Allah jalla wa ala also mentioned in a hadith al-Qudsi that Allah, uh, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah jalla wa ala says أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ I have prepared for my righteous servants Shuf, these are hadith and these verses are from the Qur'an and everything that is found in the Qur'an is haqq, is truth Allah jalla wa ala says I have prepared for my righteous servants مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ I have prepared Something that or things that no ear has heard of and no eye has heard of. So these names that you hear of all of the things that are in Jannah and they share the same names as those things that are in the dunya. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentions, radiallahu anhu mentions that they are only similar in names. And that's not hard to understand. Because sometimes you can have, or we have, Two people that are both called Salih or Muhammad and they're very different. Just because they have the same name does it mean that they are the same? La. We see so many people. Maybe now at the moment there's about 10 of us that have the same names in this room, in this hall. Lakin, our names don't mean that we're similar in attributes. So Allah Jalla wa ala says that He has prepared for His servants as salihin his servants that are righteous. And what is a righteous servant? That person that says, They say they have Iman in Allah and then they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they are upright upon that. And it's never come into the hearts of Bashar, Bani Adam. We can never imagine what Allah Jalla wa'ala has prepared for us. And then Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَقَرَأُوا إِنْ شِئْتُمْ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ قُرَةِ أَعْيُنٍ And 
read if you wish the Messenger Allah said that what Allah Jalla wa'ala has said that he has prepared for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which no soul has seen or no eye has seen also from the Naim of Jannah and the greatest Naim and the greatest thing that the believers can be given is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the greatest ni'am the greatest ni'ma rather that Allah jalla wa'ala has promised for his believers in interpreting the verse of Allah lilladhin ahsanu al-husna wa ziyada Allah jalla wa'ala or the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained what this husna and what this ziyada is those that have done good for them is goodness and even more was ziyada the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says إِذَا دَخَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةَ يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى After the people of Jannah enter into Jannah Allah Jalla wa Ala says تُرِدُونَ شَيْئًا أَزِيدُكُمْ Do you want anything that I increase you in? Do you want anything? فَيَقُولُونَ And they will ask in, a, in astonishment they are amazed يَا اللَّهُ أَلَمْ تُبَيِّدُ وُجُوهَنَا Have you not brightened our faces? Alam tudkhilna al-jannah Alam tudkhilna al-jannah Have you not entered this into the jannah? We saw in the mahshag Yawm al-qiyamah When we were uh, amongst the non-Muslims And the Muslims and, and, and the Usat and so on We saw what happened like Can you saved us, from that, saved us from that? Our faces, you've made us bright You've saved us You've entered us into jannah and you have saved us from the fire. They think that that is the end all and be all. You can't get any better than that. Because don't forget, nafsi, nafsi, they were saying not long ago. And then Allah Jalla wa ala, فَيَكْشِفُ الْحِجَابَ And Allah Jalla wa ala will remove the hijab from his beautiful face. فَمَا أُعْطُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ and they have not been given anything more beautiful than looking into the face of their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them. Also from the Naim of Jannah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in authentic hadith, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ يُنَادِي مُنَادٍ If the people of Jannah go into Jannah, a caller will call. Again, this caller is giving glad tidings, he's giving bishara to them. And he will say, يَا أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَحْيَوْ فَلَا تَمُوتُوا أَبَدًا Verily you are going to be living and you will not fear death. That death that every single one of us fears. In the dunya, from the things that are قَطْعِي that will happen is death. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ لَا يَقْتُلُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste death. And every single one of us fears death. For different reasons. Like in every single individual fears death. Lakin Allah Jalla wa ala, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, will cause the believers to live and there will be no death after that. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَصِحُّهُ فَلَا تَسْقَمُوا أَبَدًا And verily you will have sihha and health and you will never be ill after that. And then Allah Jalla wa ala says, وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَشِبُّوا فَلَا تَهْغَمُوا أَبَدًا And you will be young forever and you will not grow old. All of these things that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in these ahadiths are things that we fear in the dunya and that we dislike. Like in Allah Jalla wa ala rids us of that yawm al qiyamah, rids us of that, rids the believers of that when they enter into the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, from the verses of the Quran that Allah Jalla wa ala mentions what he has promised for us is the verses of Allah Jalla wa ala udkhulu al jannata antum wa azwajukum tuhmagun. Enter into Jannah, you and your wives, in happiness. يُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالصِّحَافِ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَأَكْوَابٍ وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْنُ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah Jalla wa Ala mentions that gold trays and cups will be passed around and they will be given everything that they desire. Everything that a person desires, they shall be given. And their eyes, everything that their eyes Desire they shall be given And they will remain in that state of na'im In that state of blessing 
for eternity. In the dunya, when we get na'im, when we get a bit of na'im, blessing, we fear, when is it going to go away? When is it going to go away? Like in, in Jannah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says that that's our state, that's the state of the believers for eternity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَتِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي أُغِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And this is the Jannah that you have inherited. بِمَا بَأْسَبَبِيَ بِمَا Because of that which you have done. So our actions are only a reason. Like we're only entering, or the Muslims only enter into Jannah due to the mercy of Allah Jalla wa Ala and His uh, bountiless uh, blessings. Lakin, these actions that we do, these ibadat, they are a reason for us to enter into Jannah. That's why when the man came to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking him about the hour, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi said, "What have you prepared for it?" Tayyib. Even if I tell you, I tell you, what have you prepared for it? And that's why some of the Salaf, because they were always in the worship and the obedience of Allah. It was said to them, or some of them would say that if I was to be told that I would die now, there's nothing I could possibly increase in my actions. Nothing I could increase. And that qawm, tajawiz wal qantaga, they're people that have gone. They're people that have reached a stage where they live with Allah. They live with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and the ahadith of the Messenger and the verses of Allah jalla wa ala. So ask yourself, if you were to die now, are you happy in the state that you are in? I believe 100% of us, every single one of us will say, La. Then the aqil, the wise person, is the one that changes before the time ends. Before the time ends. Also Allah says, لَكُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ كَثِيرَةٌ مِنْهَا تَأْكُلُونَ There are many types of fruits. Many types of fruits that we do not even know, know of. Qutufuha daniya. That you can easily pick out. It's nearby. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to climb. It's near. Lakin, where are the men that are going to work for that? And where are the women that are going to work for that? The Jannah of Allah Jalla wa'ala is ghali. We won't attain these things by sleeping all night. We won't attain these by not praying. We won't attain these by not fasting for Allah Jalla wa ala. We won't attain these except with mujahadatun nafs, with fighting our souls. We are in a constant battle. And the Muslim lives between two verses. Allah Jalla wa ala mentions that he created the jinn and the ins for his worship. And the other verse, وَعْبُدَ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until the end, until certainty comes to you. The Muslim lives between these two. And anything in between is your life. And it's your account of deeds. Be it good or be it bad. It's for you to fill it up. Just like we fill bank accounts with money. You're living between these two verses of Allah. That's the beginning of your creation. That's the beginning. وَعْبُدَ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ up until Allah Jalla wa ala certainty comes to you and death comes to you. And after certainty and after this verse, you will only reap, you will only get what you put in, in between these two verses. So it's everyone for himself. Allah Jalla wa ala, and I'll round it off with this, Jalla wa ala says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي مَقَامٍ أَمِينٍ Verily, the Muslims, the believers are in a state of security. When their brothers in mankind have gone into the pits of the fire, they are in a place of security. In gardens in which springs pour forth. They are wearing silk, thick and thin, and they are facing one another. Happy, rejoicing of the blessings that Allah has given them. كَذَلِكَ وَزَوَّجَنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ And Allah Jalla wa Ala will give them fair, beautiful, beautiful-eyed women. And likewise for the, for the women. And they will ask for whatever they desire. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ This is like 2% of what Allah Jalla wa Ala and the Messenger have described for Jannah in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. 
لكن you have to remember that Allah وعد الله لا يخلف الله وعده that is the promise of Allah Allah will not forsake his promise everything that Allah tells us is the haq that is promised لكن the responsibility comes back to us the responsibility now comes back to us don't worry about what Allah Jalla wa'ala has prepared because you know Allah Jalla wa'ala will not forsake you. It's impossible for Allah to tell you that He has prepared something for you and the Messenger to tell you that Allah Jalla wa'ala has prepared for you where He was sadiq and and then for Allah to say la. It was just something that, to get you to worship your Lord. La, abadan. It's qat'i, it's a promise by Allah Jalla wa'ala. Lakin, how can we be of those people? If you ever go into a deal with someone, and the best of example is for Allah Jalla wa'ala. If you ever go into a deal with someone, there are two parties. You have a business transaction with someone. There's you on one side and the other taraf, the other side is on our side. There's always ihtimal, there's always a possibility that you will trick him or he will trick you. Or he will leave the agreement Or you will leave the agreement There's even khiyag majlis There's even You're able to end And there's fasqh And there, you can actually end that contract So you won't actually be happy Until you've got your item And until the other person has got his Whatever it was that he exchanged That's when we're dealing with ourselves Like and who are we dealing with here? We're dealing with Allah Jalla Sha'anu. We're dealing with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So don't worry about the promise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's true. It's haq. It's waiting for you. The only point is, are you going to go out and get it? Are you going to go out of your way to work for it? And the way to do it is by worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We'll end off with a few points. About five or six points too. At practical points. Practical pieces of advice for us to attain the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Number one, al-qiyamu bi tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, establishing the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The had, the fasil, the difference between the mu'min and the not mu'min, the believer and the non-believer, is the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we hear Abu Bakr done this and Abu Bakr paid sadaqah and fasted and visited the ill person and done this all in 24 hours, we're shocked. We're surprised. Like we shouldn't be. Why? Because this is what was happening. The iman and the tawheed that he had in his heart was greater than everything. Have the tawheed of Allah connected to your life. And the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just something that we say, عرفنا التوحيد ونو التوحيد let's move on لا I'll give you a simple example which shows that we still need the tawheed of Allah in every aspect of our lives whenever we get a headache we look where's the paracetamol where's the aspirin that's the first thing we do why do we not run to the kitab of Allah why do we not read Quran do ruqi on ourselves that's just a simple example these are a means صح Lacking, rush to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're making dua, use, use the beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're standing, know that you're standing for Allah and you're standing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you connect yourself to Allah jalla wa ala, then nothing can defeat you and conquer you. Also, rushing towards Tawbah. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And rush towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Uh, did Allah say, أَيُّهَا الْفَاسِقُونَ O you who are sinful. لَا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَيَشْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Verily it may be that you are and you will be successful. Success is connected to Tawbah. Repenting to Allah Jalla wa'ala. The Messenger said, 
every son of Adam is a sinner. That's not the criterion, Lakin. The criterion is the one that comes back from that sin. We have the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, huwa man huwa. We have the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to worship Allah to the extent hatta ramat qadama. To the extent Aisha says that his feet would crack due to standing and worshipping Allah Jalla wa ala. And then Aisha is surprised. She says to him, Ya Rasulullah, and your sins have been forgiven past and present. And he said, Afala akuna abdin shakura. Should I not be a servant who is grateful that Allah has bestowed and given me these blessings? The iman that you have is equal to nothing. Nothing equals the iman that you have. How many people are disbelievers now? Hmm? For one believer, there's probably hundreds and thousands of non-believers in the dunya. Not only that, how even amongst us as believers, how many of you are sitting here now? And how many are in the surrounding cafes and in the surrounding streets and football pitches and so on? When we know the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a group of people do not come together in in a house from the houses of Allah, reading the book of Allah and studying it between them, except the angels, tranquility, peace and tranquility comes down upon them. And the angels surround them and rahmah comes down upon them. That in of itself requires the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also to be aware from the step of the steps of shaitan. Allah Jalla wa ala says, be careful from the khutwat, the steps of shaitan. Verily, he is an open enemy to you. Not a hidden enemy, an open enemy. So do not follow the steps of shaitan. Do not follow shaitan. Allah did not say, do not follow shaitan. That's badahi, that's common sense. Like you do not follow his steps. And one step, can lead you to a thousand regrets. Also, the last note, the last point is to leave off tasweef and ta'jeed. Leave off putting back. I will repent tomorrow. I will repent tomorrow. Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَسَارِعُ إِلَى مَغْفِرَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَقْدُهَا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Rush, وَسَارِعُ That's fi'l amr. It's a command from Allah. Rush towards the forgiveness of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And rush towards the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers. How can you rush towards Jannah? You can't see Jannah. If you want to sprint, you can't see Jannah. Like in the sprinting towards Jannah is be righteous deeds. That's how you sprint towards the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not think I'm going to worship Allah, especially for you youngsters. Do not think, Allah, yeah, you only live once. I'm a shabab. I'm a young person. I'm going to do everything and then when I'm older, you know, I go to the masjid. That, that masjid may not come. Go to the graveyard now. Look at the ages. 10, 5, 20, 22, 23, 19, 18, car crash, heart attack, cancer. Huh? For those that are young, how many, uh, your age is not promised. The next hour is not promised. The next minute is not promised. You can be 10 years old, go out today, get... Run over by a car. And if you die, that's your qiyamah. That's when qiyamah starts for you. That's when yawm qiyamah starts for you. So be aware and make sure do not be ghafilin. Do not be heedless people. Be alert. Be awake. And know that you're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're abd. Nothing more, nothing less. You're only a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else is secondary. Getting married, studying, education, uni, college, school, wherever it may be, secondary. No one's ever been put into the fire and no one will be put into the fire for not studying. No one will be put into the fire for not getting married. No one will be put into the fire for faqr, for poverty. The only thing that a person will and can be put into the fire for is not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the youngsters, remember the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on a day when the sun is at the heads of the people. At the heads of the people. And only seven types of characteristics, seven types of people will be under the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
from amongst them is a young man who had and who grew up in the remembrance of Allah, in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young man from a young age carrying on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not being distracted by all of the desires and all of the things that distract everyone, not only the shabab. So this is a ni'mah. Now that you've heard this hadith, it's a hujjah, it's a proof against you. When, you're, when we're looking for jobs or when a person wants to get rich, they increase the sources of avenue. So he'll work part-time, then he'll work full-time and he'll do an investment so he gets money from this and he might teach on the, on the side and so on. So he knows that there's about three or four different sides where he's getting money from. Make that your way to Jannah. Jannah is your target. You're having 10 different ways of coming to Jannah. There are eight doors of Jannah. Why? So that you can enter into all of them. There are eight ways you can go into Jannah. There are actually hundreds of ways you can go into Jannah. So for example, for the youngsters, make that your target. If I don't get into Jannah because of my Hajj, if I don't get into Jannah because of my Salah, at the very least, let me get into the Jannah because of my obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a young age to an old age. And that automatically has the Hajj that you didn't have, has the Salah that you didn't have. And especially more so these days, this day and age, especially more for the youngsters, it's important that you hold on to your religion. It's not a joke. You're being told that there's equality. You're being told you're not even men and you're not women and you're not humans. You don't know what you are. This bottle can come and say, I identify as a human being. And we have to accept that that's a human being. And what happens in school, you're being taught religious, taught religious studies, RE. And they'll say, yeah, Christianity is good. Buddhism is good. Sikhism is good. Islam is good. And everything. And then you come down, watered water down, damp. Because when you're going to school and you're hearing that Islam is okay and Christianity is okay, we're all brothers and all of that, nah. Absolute nonsense. It's not the same. Are those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims that obey Allah jalla wa ala, equal to the criminals, the person that wakes up for fajr when everyone is asleep, is he equal to the one that doesn't wake up? The one that leaves off all of his desires for the sake of Allah jalla wa ala, is he the same as the one who says, Khali wali, leave it, it doesn't matter? La, they're not equal. So especially more so, you shabab, you youngsters, need to hold on to your religion. Need to hold on to your tawheed. And the only way you can do is seeking knowledge and learning. And alhamdulillah, in this masjid, the environment is ready for you. The environment is prepared for, for you. Read the Quran of Allah. Memorize the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you read, the higher your rank is in Jannah. The more of the Quran that you read, the higher your rank is. There are lessons in this masjid. In different languages, in different sciences, fiqh, aqidah, and so on. Take advantage of that. Stay in the masjid. Your world is in this masjid, in these four corners. That's where your world is. That's where your success is. And everything out there, that's disaster. No one has ever been happy with gang culture. You ever end up six feet deep, or you end up stuck between four walls. For the rest of your life. And keep the watch of the company you keep. The good company you keep is like a perfume seller. And the bad company that you keep is like the blacksmith. Are they equal? No. If you go into a, black, go into a perfume shop, you're going to buy one. You're going to buy perfume. Or you're going to at least test it. There's testers. You can just, even if you're not buying it, you can just test it. In any case, you leave that store and you've... You've gained something, you've benefited. Like when you go to the blacksmith, your clothes will be ripped, you end up smelling nasty to the extent that you've got to find somewhere to wash. And your clothes may, be, may uh, need replacing. So know that the bad friend will take you down six feet deep. And the good friend will take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I'll take you to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? Abdullah ibn Abbas, who many of you know, you might not even know his first name, you know Ibn Abbas. He had a young man who they were friends with. He was friends with. And he said, Yah, let's go seek knowledge, man. Let's go you know, seek knowledge. The young man said to his friend, said to him, What are you talking about? Abu Bakr, Umar, Asman, Ali, the companion said, Who needs you? Hmm? Who needs you? And then Abdullah ibn Abbas left him. Abdullah ibn Abbas left him and he carried on seeking knowledge. He sought knowledge until he became an imam. And then one day he saw Abdullah ibn Abbas doing tawaf and hundreds of people running after him. Why? Because they need him. We've done hajj, we've made this, and we need fidya and so on. They need to ask Abdullah ibn Abbas. And he saw him from a distance. He said, Kana aqal minni. That shab, that young man, he was wiser than me. So do not think about temporary gain. Yes, your friends may buy a beautiful car with drugs money. Hmm? Yes, they may have status on Instagram and TikTok and all of these sorts of nonsense. They might have hundreds and thousands of followers. Like in these followers, in reality, don't avail you. They don't want to benefit you. It's you and what you put forward. Make sure that you carry on studying. Your secular studies and your Islamic studies there's nothing preventing you from secular studies. We need doctors in the Ummah. We need engineers in the Ummah. We need people that can lift up the Ummah. You're the future leaders. You're the hope of this Ummah. This lecture, 10 years time, it's you to be sitting here. The Salah that we're praying, it's going to be upon you to lead the Salah. The people organizing the conference, it's going to be on your shoulders to organize the conference. Generation after generation. So don't only think about yourself, think about the ummah. Think about the ummah. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa ahkamu billahi tawfiq wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.